Hello viewers and skating fans. Thank you again for tuning into my YouTube page this week. Uh, I have my friend Nicole with me. Hey Nicole. Hi. And uh, most of you may remember her from my World's Recap video in April, but I'm so excited she's joining me today because I'm feeling really under the weather. I have a sore throat and I want her to do just as much talking as me. <laughs> you down with that, Nicole? I'm down with that. All right. I'm also here in like my blanket. Hashtag no shame. <laughs> <laughs> Keep comfy. Yes. So let's just start off with Trophy de France. Mm -hmm. And uh, you notice me look down. I'm looking at notes. Oh, okay. Same this here. If like... I'm looking at my computer screen, I'm like looking at the protocols. So with the men's, we have Javier Fernandez, reigning world champion, winning the title easily despite not having the best performances because he had a fall in both the short and long program. Uh, what did you make of his uh, programs here, Nicole? So I am in love with that free skate so much. He is one of the few skaters where I don't care that his skating skills are not maybe up to par with some of the other skaters. And I don't care that his spins are kind of terrible. He is so charming and so pretty. And I'm just like, I'm all in with anything you got to give me. And I love the Elvis free skate. There are so many iconic moves in that program from the wiggle that he does uh, to the don't take no orders. I mean, I just, I love all of it. And through the free skate here it wasn't as on top as some of his other performances of this um particularly at japan open i think is where he really was selling it um and he looked tired towards the end of it i expect him to regain that stamina towards the end of the season uh gorgeous air position on his quad toe in the short even though he mm -hmm. fell and i just yeah i even love the short too the short is wonderful love just, the suspenders and everything i was just about to say i think you and i are the opposites because i don't love his longs i love his short programs from year to year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love his short program i really do uh but i just it gets me so happy to see him just be that charming and entertaining out there and it's kind of it's not something that you see all the time anymore. I mean, really, the only other person who does it is Ashley. Uh -huh. And, I mean, two skaters out of all of the skaters, that's, it's kind of sad that they're the... Yeah, I love that free skate so much, and I can't wait to see it clean. I really feel like that could be a moment at Worlds if it is clean. Absolutely. I actually think Javier Fernandez is the one to beat this season. Would you agree? I do. Um, I mean, we haven't seen Hanyu at peak yet, but even Hanyu's programs this year, I do like the Prince short, but, but I don't think that the long dynamic as he can be. And I think that that is going to hold him back when you have someone like Javier who's out there selling and being fairly consistent. I think that he is the one to beat. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, we also had a surprise uh, performance from Dennis Ten Yay! in France. That was so good to see. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did he have to withdraw from Skate America? Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, I think he withdrew. Was it Skate America? Or one of the earlier Grand Prix, because this is his only performance. I think it was Skate America, but yeah. Okay, so no chance for the making the Grand Prix final for him. But no. he uh, skated clean, uh, landed a quad in both the short and the long. I love Dennis's skating so much. I think his short program is lacking in choreography compared to his other programs in the past, you know, especially two years ago. And his yeah. long program is nice, but I'm not sure it's my favorite. But he skated well. I think he actually lost the long program to Adam Rapon. So um, he should be thankful for a high placement in the short program. Yeah, I mean, I love Dennis. Dennis was the one that I was rooting for two years ago at Worlds. I really wanted him to win. I loved his long program there. Uh, since then, it's been very, very rocky with Dennis ever since uh, 2015, I think that was. Um, I think that his spins need to be faster. I noticed it in both programs that they were fairly slow. I think that the steps in both the short and the free, uh, when he does them, are brilliant and when he lands the quads he tends to do it with his back really straight or he used to anyways and i love that about dennis mm -hmm. uh i hope to see him more consistent because i think that when he is a threat like no other yeah do you think he's able to add more than one quad in the free skate later on in the season i think he'd 
I have more hope for Patrick Chan than I do for Dennis with that. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Because if he only does two clean programs at Worlds with one quad in each, he may not, or he may barely be in the top five. That's the problem is that since 2015, the game has changed a lot in the men mm -hmm. and the technical difficulty has been ramped up so high to where we're doing like quad letses and quad flips and we have like three quads in the long program and just I mean what was uh competitive then is not necessarily competitive now mm -hmm. yeah, as much as I love Dennis and I do yes and um, we have to remember that there's also another part of skating, which is the program component marks, which is the artistry, like your core skating ability on the ice. And sometimes that gets overshadowed with how many quads a guy can do in his long yes. program. That's unfortunate. And his skating skills are better than Javier's. Mm -hmm. Although they're not really reflected in the, the marks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. And then we have... Adam Rapon from the U.S. winning the bronze medal here, actually finishing second in the free program segment. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you make of his long program to Arrival of the Birds? I That program has been growing on me so much. I'm really glad that he switched to this program. I think it's wonderful. That axle has improved so much over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not even worried now when he goes into that triple axle anymore. Thank God he did the quad. That was around. It's no like mm. uh, controversy like at Skate America where it was like some people were saying it was around and some weren't. I mean, that was around. It was clean. So happy for him. It was such a moment. I think that he had the best spins of the top men here. Uh, and that he has really strong legs that just, he loves to stretch and extend. And I love that about him. Uh, I think that the world team still looks like it's going to be Jason and Nathan. I think that that's where the USFS is going to go. However, I think that you cannot count Adam out. You know, Particularly I... uh, compared competing against Jason. I think that those two are the ones fighting for that second spot. I think the USFSA will just go with the top two finishers at nationals. And I don't know what that looks like, but I think it's Definitely a mixture of Nathan, Adam, Jason. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. Scary. Yeah. Do you still like his technique of going clean in the short program, leaving out the quad attempt? I think it's something that will work for him on the Grand Prix. I don't know if that's something that's going to work for him at Worlds. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there you have a bunch of men who are going to be doing quads in the short. And that's going to put him in a big deficit going into the free. So I think it works for now, but I don't think it's going to work later on. Yeah, hopefully he gains confidence from landing a queen, clean quad toe here to add it mm -hmm. in his short program at Nationals and maybe four continents if he goes there. Yeah, I mean... Um, also, I want to make a comment that Eurosport always goes on and on about Shoma Uno's strong legs and like how big his thighs are. <laughs> Adam has much stronger legs <laughs> than Shoma. Shoma is so tiny and cute and adorable and I love him, but Adam has the strong legs. Yes. <laughs> Adam definitely had the performance uh, for the men's here for me besides Javier. Do you think he's able to add on a triple toe after his axle jumps now that they're getting better? I mean, yeah, he needs to maximize on the points wherever possible. And I think that the triple axle is now strong. I don't worry about it anymore. So if he wants to add a combination like that onto it, go for it. Because, especially because you're not doing the quad in the short. Absolutely. That puts you way behind. All right. So for the last men to discuss here, let's talk about Adam's teammate, Nathan Chen. So I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people that saw his short program live, all three quads, like the quad lets in combination, the quad flip, and I went Nathan Chen, everything Nathan Chen from now on, national champion, let's send him to the Olympics yeah. and Worlds. And then his performance in the long program where he fell on two of those quad attempts kind of set me back, you know, to become more level-headed and say, okay, there is a downside to attempting so many difficult jumps in your long program. I think that he is comparable to Jim Boyong in a lot of ways. And I mean that as when the quads go, you start to notice 
the other sides to his skating. So the U.S. judge here gave him nines in PCS. <laughs> Nathan? Yes. Wow. Um, okay. I will say that his um, basic skating skills have improved. You know, I see better spins. They still need to uh, be improved even more, but... I see more attention to detail there. I hope it's something that continues to move on an upward trajectory um, over time, especially going into the Olympic year. Yeah, I think that that's one area where training with Patrick Chan can only be a benefit for him because you see Patrick Chan just skating circles around everyone else around you and you can't help but be motivated by that kind of quality of skating. Uh, and I think that the reverse is true as well for Patrick with the quads, but... I think that Nathan in that environment is great. Uh, he's just crazy going for all these quads, and I love it. I mean, it's so exciting seeing him go for it, especially because he's. it makes it more exciting because we haven't really been up with the quads in a while, so that's really cool. Uh, I He needs new costumes for both programs. Just especially, especially the long. I can't remember. What's the one with the white and the half vest? Thing. I think that's the short. The short? Yeah, I don't like that one. I hated the short program in general. I thought <laughs> that the three was better. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> new costumes for nationals. Nathan Chen, please. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So now let's move on to the ladies, which I did not get to watch live. And I was not able to rewatch Evgenia Medvedeva's long program. But I heard that she had a surprise surprising mistake, a fall on a jump, did that not, it did not prevent her from winning the title. No, I think that she is at a point where it is going to take multiple competitions with errors in order for them to start going back on the PCS a little bit because her scores are really, really high right now. Uh, I think that her consistency is so admirable and that that fall was her trying to fix the edge on the Lutz and it looked more outside than she fell. Uh -huh. However, that long program has got to go. <laughs> I really, I mean, I don't really like either programs, but I guess I prefer the short because I can barely stand the long program. The short isn't offensive. That's correct. The yeah. long is where it's like, okay, this is not cool <laughs> to milk a tragedy for skating points. Mm. And, I, and I like her. I think that she has X Factor and that her, you know, such consistency. And I love that about her. That long program doesn't do her justice. I don't think that she connects to it, nor can she. She's not connected to that tragedy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the last program, last season's program was even better for her. I wish she would go back to that. Absolutely. And I didn't love that program, but <laughs> better. Yeah. And you know my opinion about her. I'm kind of sick of seeing her win every single competition. Mm -hmm. I'm used to it by now where I don't mind watching her and I don't hate her you for winning. Look over it. Yeah, that's right. Um, if anything, I hope that she encourages other skaters to go up to her level technically. Mm -hmm. So um, she is contributing towards pushing the boundaries of the sport. Um, so I give her credit for that. Um, she did have a Russian teammate finish second with the silver medal right behind her, Maria Sotskova. That's a yes. new name for me. What about for you? Yeah, that's a new name. I actually liked her a little bit. Mm -hmm. I liked her more than some of the other Russians. For one, she does the Meryl Davis thigh slaps before she gets on the ice, and that's like, <laughs> yes, girl, go for it. Like, come on. <laughs> um, she looks down quite a bit, I've noticed, in her skating. She has a gorgeous Bielman. I love her air position. She has better packaging than most of the other Russian ladies, from mm -hmm. what I've noticed. She doesn't have, like, bad gloves or horrible dresses and good tights, good skates. Like I She like doesn't overact. Yeah. Um, her axle is a bit uh, Litnitskaya. Mm. <laughs> uh, the flip is a little scary as well. But overall, I did like her. What about you? I liked her, and I thought she was good, but in Russia, I'm not sure that that's enough to get you on the world team. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I kept thinking that uh, throughout the whole time watching both her programs. I was like, this is nice. She's pleasant. She has a, a little bit of a soft toned, softer tone to her skating than her um, Russian counterparts. But I just couldn't help but think that, is it enough to get her a bronze medal at nationals? 
Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more uh, westernized, her skating, than exactly. some of her other teammates as well. And I kind of like that about her. Mm -hmm. um, the jumps, I do worry about them going if she grows another inch. <laughs> I hope she doesn't grow. She looks kind of tall enough already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked her. Great. So someone who I really liked from this competition was Wakaba Higuchi of Japan. I thought she was an amazing skater. The reason why she was held back with a bronze medal is because she pops her jumps. Popped yeah. one in the long and in the short. And when you do it in the short on your solo jump, that's zero points. But otherwise, I think her packaging is great. Her styling yeah. is awesome. I think she's on track to be the next... Japanese star of ladies really? skating. Really? Okay. I think so. Not yet, you know, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, I think give it a few years because I believe she's only 15, close to being 16. Yeah. yeah. What did you make of her programs? Yeah, I thought that I, I loved her dress in the short. It was very Sasha Cohen in like 2002 or three. Rostelecom loved it. Uh, her Lutz toe, love her Lutz toe. Mm. I really love short program where she did the Morricone music might have been the free either or Morricone is always a good idea I really liked her I think that Japanese nationals this season but more so next season is going to be crazy for that Olympic team because I think that as of now the Olympic team is Marin Honda and Satoko Miyahara whoever gets that third spot there's like five different ladies that it could possibly be. She is definitely in that mix and she is one of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have high hopes for her. I, like I want it to be Wakaba. <laughs> Over Mao. <laughs> I mean, Mao's been to two Olympics <laughs> by now. I don't know. Um, I just hope that she loses this pattern of popping a jump. Because she has the potential to score really big. I believe her score was a 65 with a popped uh, jump in the short program. So that's, that's a big score for someone who like, doesn't do a required element. And we're forgetting about my Mihara, who's getting Mihara, who's getting all the scores right now. So Absolutely. <laughs> she's definitely in the mix as well. Okay, fourth pl oh, do we have to talk about the fourth place finisher here? <laughs> Isn't that your girl? Yes, okay, so let's start with a positive. That short program was exceptional. You can imagine how I felt after seeing this score. 72, personal best yeah. by far. Um, she, with that short program skated the way it was, and it was not in Canada, she's really competitive with the other top ladies, minus the Russians, maybe, of the world. Um, one thing I noticed about her short program is that Gabby was really relaxed. You know, she wasn't overthinking things, and that's when she skates the best. The fault with the long program was that she actually went into it looking pretty calm. She had the mistake on the first triple toe, triple toe attempt, and it wasn't her fault. It looked like her free leg caught the ice, and she let that get to her head. And it was not a disaster, but it was a shame that it knocked her off the podium. Yeah, uh, one of the things about Gabby that I don't think a lot of people mention, but you and I were talking about this, is that her jumps are very gracey gold before she went to Frank. Mm -hmm. They are massive. That triple flip in particular, when she does it, it is money every single time. She is fast. She skates just like light years <laughs> ahead of everyone else in terms of speed. Um, I don't like either program for mm -hmm. her, particularly the long, I think, is not her style. I, Gershwin is, is kind of slow. It's very classical. And to me, she's kind of an Ashley. She's a gritty girl. I want her to go out there and, like, skate to something with fire in it. Um, she could work on her skating skills a little bit with the depth of the edge. Uh, every judge gave a plus three on that triple-triple in the short. That's right. I made a note to talk about that. That's an amazing thing to accomplish under IJS. I believe she's the first one on the Grand Prix this year who has achieved that as well. Mm -hmm. That is her money jump. I don't want to see a triple let's triple toe attempt in the short program again. Maybe later, maybe next season, but I, I like Gabby Dalman when she's clean. Sure, that works too. Yeah, she has a gorgeous flip. I mean, she'd be getting plus three on that. All right. 
are there any other lady skaters you want to talk about here? I mean, Gracie, Gracie no. and Mal. Where is Mal on here? <laughs> I think she's right below Gracie. Oh, yeah, eighth and ninth place. That's not good. No. Um, the one, a few things I want to say about Gracie. I, I loved her Nancy Kerrigan dress and the braids in the free skate. Mm -hmm. Loved. Her packaging was great. She's the best spinner in the U.S. by far. There's so much to like about Gracie skating. Um, I do think that we need to switch her sports psychologist, like, pronto. Because whoever she has right now, it is not working for her. And get rid of that flip in the short. God. Do <laughs> a loop. Do a sal cow. I don't care. Be clean. <laughs> She's good at the loop. Do the loop. Yes. Do the loop. Um, um, I think that Eurosport mentioned that she had more commitment here, which I saw as well in the free skate. It wasn't as bad as Skate America, where it looked like she was just kind of a mess. She started to fight through the jumps. And that gave me hope that she's starting to fight back against her doubts in her mind. Um, I hope for the best for Gracie. I really hope that she's not the Vanessa Atler of figure skating. Uh, as much as I love Vanessa, <laughs> we know that that went um, a little downhill fast. I, I have all the hope that she can just be clean later on this season, but yeah. Do you think she has seconds. a shot at the world team? Oh yeah. yeah. I really believe that they're going to put her on that world team because this is the pre-Olympic year. If for nothing else. Absolutely. I did not watch her long program, but I saw her short program live and her short program is growing on me. So there's still a competitiveness inside her. It just needs to come together with the jumps. Yeah, and I like that in the short, they're utilizing differences of plane in the short. She's mm -hmm. going up, she's going down more often, uh, trying new moves. Some of them are not executed the best, but she's trying new things in that short program, and I really like that for her. The long, ditch it. <laughs> it's not her. <laughs> but that short, I like for her. Uh, and I think that it is pushing her to do new things and to grow her skating a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't mind the long. I actually can see myself liking it if it's really clean. okay. Um, but that may be because I've seen her do skate to worse music before, like Sleeping Beauty, <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. Those two I actually hated. Oh, God bless Phantom. <laughs> no, right? Okay. That was, yeah. Are we ready to talk about pairs now? Uh, yeah. Do you want to go through Mal or skip? Oh, no, no. Let's talk about Mal. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, it's hard to watch her right now. Um, I think that she's capable of so much more. Put the triple axle back in, figure out a triple triple for the short, and she is totally in contention for the world title. Mao is so good. She has everything when she has her technical content in. As of now, though, with only a triple double in the short and a double axle, I'm worried about her making the Olympic team. Yeah, she she could probably be okay with a triple flip, triple toe, triple toe, double axle. I mean, that's really a low base value for technical. But her spins are usually really good. I just hate seeing her pop jumps and doing a triple double as a combination. Yeah, didn't she used to do a flip toe back in the day? Like Way back in the day. Go back to that. Start learning <laughs> go again. back to the, the good time. Go back to the good Go back to the flip toe, do a loop. There you go. Clean short. Yeah, and I think I've said this before, maybe even in one of my videos, but um, a lot of times when you watch her skating, it's so beautiful, so great. She's really like an artist on the ice, but you're confused why she's so low, and it's because the technical content isn't there, and then also she gets under rotation calls on top of that. So that's why she's like fifth when people think, oh, she had a nice skate. I was moved by her skating. She has such great skating skills, and her steps are gorgeous. Her spins are gorgeous. I mean, it's just that technical content that she is capable of. She does have it. We have seen it. It's just we're seeing such a watered-down version that is not competitive right now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully she finds some sort of motivation, maybe within, yeah. to continue to skate and be great next Because season. we all love Mal. Absolutely. And I love a good comeback story. And... It would be great to have her do the triple axle at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Repeat 2014. Not the short. Mm, not the short. Absolutely not. 
Okay, so now moving on to pears. You know, I actually, I don't know your opinion. Yes, I don't know your opinion on Aliona and Bruno. Okay, so I think Aliona is life goals. Okay, I, I can see that. Aliona. Like, we talk about how <clears throat> Ashley Wagner is the grandma of skating. Like, Aliona's way older, and she's just great in whatever bodysuit she puts on. She didn't wear one here, I don't think, but yeah. Uh, the twist is gorgeous. I mean, just amazing. The short, I am obsessed with that short program. I think it is the best pair short program this season. Love it. Love it. Love her. How badly do you think that Aliona wants that Olympic gold? <laughs> you know, she doesn't look desperate for it to me in my eyes when I watch her skating. She just looks like she's a diva on ice. I mean, this is going to be her fifth Olympics? Sixth? Fifth or sixth? Wow, that's a lot. I think it's lot. her fifth. Yeah, she, she wants that gold. Like, <laughs> please, get out of her way, Megan New Hamill. <laughs> Okay, so they were really on a league of their own because they actually had mistakes in both the short and the long and still mm -hmm. won by a good margin. Was it because in the short program they attempted to throw triple axel? Triple axel. Yeah, she put her foot down, uh, which Aliona does a lot, but we forgive her because she's amazing. <laughs> uh, I thought that they had great speed in their side-by-side. -side. Uh, yes. Eurosport called him the strongest male pair skater. Do you agree with that? I think he's one of the stronger male skaters in pairs. I, I don't know if they mean strong physically, because okay. I think physically, yes. Or strong in his uh, elements. Maybe not so much. Uh, I do like him, though. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some things to note about the scoring here is the German judge gave all 975s and a 10 for Aliona. Oh, I see that. Judge number five. Wow. They also beat Duhamel and Radford in components from Skate Canada in the short here. Mm. Yeah, uh, and only a point behind them there overall. They beat them by three points in PCS in the long two, but they were 10 points behind in TES due to mistakes. So that to me says that if they're clean, they are going to be in contention for that world title because they are really liking them with the components, even in uh, countries that are not their own. Yes. Is that the battle for gold at Worlds right now? Is Aliona and Bruno against Duhamel and Radford? I think so. I mean, we don't really know where Sui and Han are and what they're doing. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't count them out as well. I think that between those three, though, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about their free program, because I remember watching that earlier today. And I'm reminded mm -hmm. by all of the little errors they make when I open up the protocols. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's the side-by-sides were not beautiful. <laughs> yeah what do you think of the program i like both programs it very much reminds me of uh what the french did last season in, in the free dance at worlds i did like it i the think french the meaning vanessa and morgan no 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 the french ice dancers oh yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> french ice like, dancers, mm, yes. i'm not sure yeah <laughs> yes um i think that the short is the stronger program overall especially in the steps absolutely it gets very creative they had a dip in pcs for the free program is that because of all the mistakes yeah they were 10 points um 10 points back from new hamill and radford like i said from what they did at skate canada which is um that's a pretty big gap but even so i don't i think that the fact that they even beat them by three points in pcs mm -hmm. With those mistakes, that is a really good sign. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, the winners of the silver medal here are the Russian pair Evgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov. I've said this on video before, is that they're not my favorite skaters. I don't find them exciting. Even when they're clean, they're good at their elements. So I don't know what it was, but I thought their short program was the most exciting I've ever seen them skate. Like, you know, lighthearted yeah. music. Maybe they're giving a little bit more facial expressions. The elements were on. What did you think? Um, there's be one of the strongest pairs in Russia right now. The fact that uh, Velocia and Trankov are not there. Uh, Stolbov and Klyvov, I think, are injured. They're probably the strongest pair team in Russia right now. I think that they are fast. They have a 
beautiful twist that just about hits the ceiling every time they do it. Um, the lifts don't really go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're very concentrated in like one small area. Uh, but I mean, they're fine. They're not my favorite pair team, but they're yeah. fine. Speaking of the twist, they attempted a quad twist in the long. I don't think that went very well, but good for them. <laughs> good for them for trying. Yes. And then I really remember not being impressed by their long program. I, I have nothing to say about it. <laughs> Neither do I. Okay. So speaking of the quad twist, we have the French pair, you know, Vanessa and Morgan skating on home ice. And they also attempted a quad in the, the free program. Was it the quad sow cow? Throw sow cow? I am not sure. I'm the one Pro with the protocols. I should take a look here. I, I, probably the quad sow. Throw quad sow, yes. Um, she stayed on her feet. Minus two GOE, though. So it was not well executed. But um, that long program is a fan favorite. Really? Yes, I heard short. many people raving about their long program. I like both. I mean, they're just two sexual skaters with great chemistry on the ice that skate to, like, unique and modern music. I'm a fan of them. Yeah, um, I especially really like their uh, short program music in particular. Mm -hmm. That works for them. Uh, my notes for them basically is uh, we got Morgan, Javier, and Guillaume all the same week, and we are so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> she looks amazing in a, in a pantsuit. Yes. <laughs> so good. Did you have anything to say about any of the other pair of skaters? Marissa and Marvin? I didn't see any of the other ones, so you can comment if you'd like. Okay, so I think that she's the best dressed pair girl. By far. Marissa Castelli. Gets love her dresses. Yes, love. Uh, he landed the toes this time, and she <gasps> did. It. Oh, I did not know this. <laughs> he landed it this time. Come on, Marissa. He <laughs> pulled his weight this time. That tr throw triple flip was way off axis. It didn't have a chance in hell of getting around. Um, I said, every time this journey program isn't clean, a child dies. They were off the music. Um, but it's getting better. Mm. So I think I told you this before. But I'll, I'll say it on camera. I am waiting for that day where that journey long program is skated clean so I can share it on Facebook with my um with my friends who aren't skating fans. I only like to to share share like good programs. Yeah. And they haven't really that. skated it that well yet. Like I don't care about under rotations or yeah. doubling popping jumps. I just want them to stay on their feet and it just has not happened. I'm hoping nationals is when I can finally share their video with my friends. And that could be a moment at Nationals. I mean, I don't think that there's a clear-cut world team other than Haven uh, Denny. I think that she's pretty much the only one that's, like, on that world team. I think that it's anyone else's game at this point. Um, I don't know. I have getting... a feeling USFSA wants to send Tara and Danny. Yeah. Over Marissa and Mervyn. Hmm. But they've been so Nicole. Yeah, I just lost everything you said after I spoke, so you're gonna have to say it again. Okay, <laughs> I said, um, I think that that's what the USFS wants. I don't know if that's going to happen at nationals because I don't really trust Tara and Danny in the short program, and their throws have been off in the long. Yeah, they have not been gaining momentum as national champions. I don't think. No. They kind of had that one great skate at Nationals in the short and the long. They, they put it together. They did it. Now it's about backing it up. And Absolutely. that's where we're mm -hmm. Okay. Now, moving on to dance. My favorite. <laughs> Ooh, the French. Yes, they won. Yes. Okay. So I think that the short is not as daring as some of the other teams. I think that when you go for swing, it's a little bit safe and boring in a way, even though most of the teams are going with hip hop. I think that that's something unique that you don't really see in skating. And so this short was not as, um, not as bold of a choice. Mm -hmm. for that. 
skated uh, I well. I love their midnight blues pattern. Mm -hmm. I think what were you one say? one second. Going back to their short dance, I was saying it was skated well. Um, there's an elegance about their skating, but I put in my notes, cute without looking young, and I think that's what comes when you choose a skate to swing music, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, I love their midnight blues pattern. Me the too. Short. And the choreography and the swing section, I think that the choreography was great. It wasn't at peak execution yet. Uh, I think that they are going to be behind after the short at Worlds. That's that's pretty much the big thing. I, I love their first lift in the free, um, but it doesn't take you on the same journey as last year's did. And this, this is kind of a problem, is that because they are usually such great free program skaters... Mm -hmm. You need a good free dance if you're going to be behind after the short, which is what I think is going to happen because Tessa and Scott's, I think, is the slam dunk short. I don't think that Absolutely. anyone in dance has a slam dunk free, but particularly them. Yeah. It's going to be hard to live up to that expectation, though, because their free yeah. program last year was so good. It is um, one of my favorite programs of all time. I love it. I still think their free dance can help them win Worlds. It's good enough. They're great enough skaters individually. Uh, Guillaume has amazing strength and can like hold so much while being on like a deep edge. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I think that some notes about scoring that I wanted to make is that uh, so the caller didn't like Tessa and Scott at Skate Canada, but they still almost tied for levels here in the short. Mm -hmm. Now there was one point difference in TES, but they almost had a identical PCS. So that to me says that it's going to be really, really important to be getting your levels in that short dance at work because they're pretty much tied as yeah. far as that. The free is where you see the big difference because Tessa and Scott only scored a 111 versus the French who scored a 115 here in the free. Uh, in the free for Gabby and Guillaume, they got five level fours, two level threes. And then for Tess and Scott, they got three level fours and four level threes. That's a big difference where they need to really make it up, Tessa and Scott, in that free dance and really be hitting your levels because I think that it's going to be so close at Worlds, whichever way that it goes, uh, and only a one-point difference in PCS for the free. So this is going to be tight at Worlds. And really exciting. Very exciting. Nail biting oh even. I cannot wait for NHK. <laughs> Ooh, that is one week away. I can't believe it. And let's see here. So pretty much Gabriella and... Guillaume were on a league of their own so yeah. I feel like it was a fight for the silver medal although Madison Hubble and Zach Donahoe won Don the silver medal pretty easily over Piper and Paul yeah um I I love Mar Madison and Zach I appreciate their hip-hop in the short they have more hip-hop in that short program than most of the other teams do um I really like Piper and Paul's short program it's not hip hop. <laughs> it's 70s. 70s is not hip hop. <laughs> and I, I like the program, but it's not really hip hop. They, Madison and Zach go for it though, which I really appreciate. I think that she needs to get rid of the tan skates because it doesn't, it highlights some of her weaknesses that she can have in extension and toe point at mm -hmm. times. Uh, the short is getting better as far as execution goes, other than her mess up this week um, on the back inside counter. It's getting better. Uh, love the ending pose, too, of the short. It's super dynamic. It just, boom, drop, love. I haven't really seen an ending like that in quite a while. Uh, great midnight blues pattern. They really drive the edges. Uh, and adore the free. Adore the free. I, I was just going to say, I did not watch their short dance. I watched their free dance, though. And I loved it more than I thought I would. I love it. I think it could be the free dance of the year. The only thing is that I think that they need to take out that third piece of music that they use because I think that that is where you start to lose it a little bit. Is that the but last piece of music? Otherwise, I adore. Hmm? Was that the last piece of music? Yes, the third piece is the last piece. Okay. I agree. Uh, the lifts need work. Do they? Them. Yeah, they're not as... Madison Hubble is fairly tall, and that makes it a little difficult, I know, to get some of those Tessa Virtue-esque positions. <laughs> uh, but I think that should they work on those lift and should politics start to swing their way, 
that they should be in conversation for that national title. Do I think that it would happen? No, but do I think that it should happen? Yes. Do you think it would start with a silver medal at nationals over Madison Chalk and Evan Bates this year? It would start slow. Yeah. I mean, I really don't think that it's going to happen for them as national champions until 2019. Mm -hmm. But I think that they should be in that conversation constantly for that national title. Okay. At the very least, silver. I think that they are second best. Do you prefer Madison and Zach over Chalk and Bates? Yes. Really? Okay. I think that Madison and Zach are maybe the best in the U.S., um, cool. even over the Shibs. I think that there's quality that Madison and Zach have, that the Shibs, as great technical skaters as they are, mm -hmm. don't always have, if that makes sense. No. Yeah. As someone who's not very um, knowledgeable in ice dance, so I go off of what I see and how I feel, and I do feel like um, Zach and Madison skate bigger, and that's hard for the Shibutanis to do because they're shorter, even though they're amazing technicians. I, I can see what they do with their blades. Um, a lot of times when I watch ice dance, I focus on the knees up. So I want to see performance. I want to see you know, abandonment. And Maya doesn't really do that so well. No, and I think that that's a big difference between Madison and Zach as well, is that Madison and Zach come across as adults. Mm -hmm. Very adults <clears throat> in a way that you don't get from some of the other teams. Uh, as much as I love them, like I love the Shibitanis. I think I've, I've always liked the Shibitanis. Mm -hmm. But um, Madison and Zach are just true artists in a way that the shibs are very focused on being clean, which it's, it's hard That's to right. have that. Right. I would even say I get that Madison and Zach are more emotional ice dancers, which is great. And I think, I, you know this, I think Madison Chalk just sells it. And I love that about her. <laughs> you definitely do. That's your girl. <laughs> Absolutely. Of. Yes. Um, I did not watch Piper and Paul, but are they clearly not in contention for a world medal. Be on that world team and they will be on the Olympic team uh, as like the bronze medalists at nationals. Uh, I don't think that the short is hip hop in any way. It's really sad about the twizzles, the fall hand down situation that happened in that short program. He really is giving it. Okay. He is wearing the full on like, uh, 70s style pants he's got the mustache going on he is working it for all it's worth love that about paul uh her posture and her turnout needs work as it always has but i think that they're a very well trained team there's something about them when they go out there where i don't expect them to make big mistakes ever which was kind of why the twizzle mistake was very shocking mm -hmm. but i i see in them that they are like training their step sequences and their midnight blues pattern constantly is what i see in them uh, and that's admirable. Absolutely. Okay, so I think that does it for our Trophy Day France recap, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so how about we take a few minutes of a break, and then we'll start filming for a Cup of China. Cool. Excellent. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Bye.